If you want to know how to create this awesome bolero jacket, just stick with me and I'll show you how. Hi, I'm Aletha with Rivers and Zippers. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad that you stopped by today because today I'm gonna show you how I use this bow pattern to alter it and create this gorgeous bolero jacket for my model. It's so nice and well fitted. I am sure you're gonna love it. So stick with me and I'm gonna show you how to sew this jacket. Okay everyone, in my previous video, I showed you how to alter the pattern for the Vogue V8957. So now let's take those pieces and start sewing our beautiful bolero jacket. Now you can use any type of woven fabric that you'd like. As for me, I will be using this gorgeous low pile faux fur as well as a nice silky lining. Now go ahead and start laying your pattern pieces on your fashion fabric. Make sure that your back piece is on the fold. If you'd like, you can use the suggested layout on the Vogue pattern. Since my fabric is faux fur, I will not be laying my pieces out this way. I have to lay them out separately. Let me show you. First, I need to lay my fabric with the wrong side facing up. Then I find the center of my fabric, so the fold line, and I mark it with a pin. Now I need to lay my back piece on the center fold and pin it so that it won't move. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and measure my horizontal balance line with the salvage, making sure that I know exactly where that mark is or how many inches from the salvage so that I can do the same thing with my front piece. So once I know exactly where I want it, I'm just gonna go ahead and pin it so that it won't move. The next step is to just go ahead and do the same thing for the front piece as well as flipping over the back piece, keeping it on the center line. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and trace all of my pieces out so I'll have like a traced line around all of my pieces and that's how I'm going to cut out my pieces. So here we have it. This is how I've laid down my pattern on the wrong side of this fabric, which is a low pile fabric of faux fur. And as you can see, the markings are perfectly done with the notches perfectly in place. I marked my small and large circles with Taylor's tack. Those are in place. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut this pattern out properly. Okay, so we have cut out our fashion fabric and we're going to cut out our lining, but I just wanted to show you what is important for the sleeve. For the sleeve, we're going to cut it out just as it is, except at the bottom, we are going to give it one more inch. So when we cut out our lining, we're going to cut out our lining exactly as the pattern is. So the, the, lining, the lining for the sleeve is going to end exactly as the pattern but the fashion fabric is going to be one inch longer and you'll see why. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get all of our pieces
So now what we're going to do is we're going to get all of our pieces and we're going to go ahead and cut out our lining for our jacket. And it's going to be in this beautiful silky rose fabric. Okay, so before I move any further, I want you to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell so that you can be reminded whenever I do any special occasion designs, tips and techniques for all kinds of special occasion wear, I'm sure you're gonna love it. So don't forget to hit the bell. The very first step that we're going to do is we're going to match our notches and then we're going to go ahead and sew across the shoulders, each shoulders. Then we're going to match the notches on our side seam and we're going to sew down each side. The next step is to match the notches on the lining and to sew across the top of the shoulders, each shoulder, match your notches to the side seam and sew down your side seam. So both shoulders and both sides. So the next step is to match your pieces together. Make sure you match all of your dots, your notches, and everything you need so that it is perfectly even. Make sure you put right sides to right sides, and then we're going to stitch all the way around from the neck, the front, and the back in one long stitch. And then we're going to trim, turn it inside out, and then we're going to do a nice understitching. So let's go to our machine and stitch all the way around with a regular stitch. After you have trimmed your seam and made your stitch all the way around, you're going to do a nice understitching about a quarter of an inch away from the seam. Understitching is very important. It makes your garment look nice and neat and professional. We've done a beautiful understitching to our garment all the way around. And I think that it looks very, very nice. Now the next step is to baste our armholes, both armholes, with a nice basting stitch. Now I personally like to use a needle and thread and hand baste my garment at this point. But you can use the sewing machine with the basting stitch, it doesn't matter, as long as it's basted nice and neat and all of the notches and circles and dots are matching. So the next thing you're going to do is to create an E-stitch along the top of your sleeve cap from notch to notch, but I like to go from circle to circle. I do that because I find it easier for me to ease my sleeve cap into my armhole. So from circle to circle, I'll create a double stitch with my longest stitch length. And then I'm going to fold my sleeve in half and I need to create a seam. So I'm going to create a seam here. If you are following the Vogue pattern, at this point you will have prepared your ruffle. As you can see, I have prepared a cuff instead. So a band or a cuff that fits loosely around the wrist. So whichever design you've chosen, you're going to put your band on the outside of your garment, making sure that the raw edges match. I'm going to turn my sleeve right side out because when I put my band on, it needs to be right side out. So here's my seam. I know this is black, 
and a little hard to see, but you're going to match the raw edges, raw edge to raw edge, and you're going to pin your band or your ruffle, and you're going to baste all the way around. The next step is to stay stitch our lining. So I've already done that. So I have two rows of stitches. One is exactly on the seam line, which is 5 eighths of an inch away from the edge. We're also going to stay stitch under our sleeve one seam, one stitch, okay, just from dot to dot. And that is going to also be 5 eighths of an inch away from the edge. Next, we're going to fold our seam down 5 eighths of an inch and we're going to clip where it's going to be tight because as you are turning your seam down 5 eighths of an inch all the way around you may need to clip as necessary and I've started turning mine all the way around. I wanted to show you that you can clip as much as you need to in order to loosen the tightness. So here's the stay stitching and here's all of my clippings. I clipped as much as I like to loosen the tightness around my sleeve. Okay, so now that we have our sleeve cap basted, we created our ease stitch, we clipped where we needed to clip in order to create some ease. We're now going to go ahead and use our sleeve lining and put our sleeve into our sleeve lining, right side to right side. Now we have our sleeve and our sleeve linings together right side to right side. We're just going to sew the lower edge of our sleeves where we have our raw edges. We're going to pin, we're going to sew, and we're going to trim the seam. Okay, so now that I have my seam, I'm just going to trim the seam down, and then I'm going to turn it out, and then I'm going to under stitch the lining with my right sides to right sides of my sleeve let me show you so this is my jacket this is the right side of my jacket and this is the right side of my sleeve so with right sides to right sides on the inside we're going to match all of our seams we're going to match all of our circles and we're going to match all of our notches. Make sure that we go ahead and ease everything together. So if we need to ease, we're going to ease. And then we're going to base stitch this armhole to the jacket. Make sure, make sure that you do not sew your lining. Make sure to keep your lining out of the way. Then my first stitch is going to be the base stitch before you go ahead and make a regular stitch. And what that does, at least for me, it gives me a chance to smooth things out. So if you see any gathering that shouldn't take place, you can cut the stitch and smooth it out. Make sure that everything is just right all the way around. Your lining as well as your fabric on the outside. So when you turn your jacket to the outside. Just take a look. Make sure that all of the seams are just like you want it. Make sure it's perfect. Make sure that there's no bulking, no gathering anywhere around your jacket. Once you examined your seam, this is just a basting stitch. You can go ahead and now make a real stitch all the way around. Okay, so now that we have our stitch. So we based it first, then we inspected our jacket, make sure everything was okay inside and out. And then we did a regular stitch all the way around. 
now what we're going to do is we're going to go in one quarter of an inch away from our stitch all the way around after we do that we're going to trim our sleeve and press it all right so here we have our stitch where we stitch a quarter of an inch in so now I'm going to use my pinking shears to trim very close to that quarter of an inch seam and then once I do that I'm going to press it okay so now that we have our seam nice and stitched trimmed very closely to the quarter inch so we've kept our lining out of the way while we did our stitching and now with my sleeve roll you're just going to set that seam in nicely so we're going to press towards our sleeve and away from the lining I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch my sleeve lining all the way around but I just wanted to show you first here's my sleeve here's the cuff of my sleeve I just wanted to point out if you can remember for my pattern for my sleeve I made my fashion fabric one inch longer than my lining when I put my lining in what's going to happen is my cuff is going to disappear into my jacket and that's the effect that I want just remember if you are doing this is the C that we used and we altered it a little bit but the sleeves were shorter and the ruffles on the sleeves are showing the arm is a little tighter and just wanted you to be mindful of the fact that if you are doing this exactly the way this is you add the ruffle and you add it the ruffle on the sleeves and it's showing in my case my cuff is barely showing barely showing and that's the effect that I want the last thing that we're going to do on our jacket is we're going to do a slip stitch now a slip stitch is a really useful stitch to attach a lining or a hem and what you're going to do is uh, get a nice sharp needle and if you don't know how to do a slip stitch look check out my video right here and I'll show you how to do a slip stitch I'm going to start from my under seam and I'm going to go all the way around and I'm going to attach my sleeve to my garment with a slip stitch and I'm going to finish by putting my other sleeve on in the same manner and then my jacket is done so now that we have installed our beautiful lining the sleeve lining is sewn in by hand with a really nice slip stitch all the way around look how nicely that's done a nice slip stitch we basted it this is a basting stitch so very simply just remove your basting stitch And once I finish removing my basting stitch, I'm going to take it over to the iron and press it very nicely. Okay, so here we have it. It turned out really, really nice. It's a beautiful sleeve here with a hidden cuff. I love it. The inside is done so well. The seams are perfect. I think it's gorgeous okay guys I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I'm sure that you'll love the look please if you make this jacket post it in the description below I would love to see it thank you I'll see you in the next video